let's go ahead and check on the fire. Ooh, okay, can see the fire grates again. So we want to fix that and raise the level of the coals. We should be shoveling quite a bit more coal. And you can see those brakes just sparking away there. See those uh, sparks flying from the brake blocks? That's the characteristic of these cast iron brake shoes as well. The faster you go, the less effective they actually get. Look at the sparks coming from the chimney. This is how not to drive your steam locomotive. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to those new subscribers as well. Good to have you aboard. In this video, I thought we'd take a look at the G2 locomotive. This is the LNWR G2 uh, heavy freight locomotive, steam locomotive, as you can probably tell if you know a little bit about locomotives. So this is developed by the Mesh Tools software development company for Train Simulator Classic. Okay, and that's what we're playing today. Excellent, excellent locomotive here. Just going to take a real quick pause here just to explain that this video is more aimed at users, I guess, who are trying to master this locomotive. I've seen a lot of reports where people are saying, oh, this locomotive is too difficult to drive in the simulation. It keeps stalling. I keep running out of steam. I keep running out of water. My fire goes out, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, this video is going to be aimed at you who want to learn more about how to drive this thing without it kind of you know breaking down on you and all that kind of thing it's actually a very advanced level of simulation this locomotive it's one of the most realistically modeled locomotives i've ever seen in a simulation so there's a lot that can go wrong if you're not careful you can do things like overheat the brake shoes so you get sparks flying out from the brakes um, you can also get sparks out of the chimney your coals can dance around on the fire grate you can cause you can run out of water you can over prime the boiler and all sorts of fancy stuff okay you can really get yourself in trouble you can jam on the brakes by over priming as well and then basically ruin the locomotive so yeah there's a lot that goes on here you really have to be on the ball with this thing you can't just sit back pull a lever and just watch the thing go down the tracks so if you're more of a casual observer you may not get too much out of it hopefully you still do i'm going to be wearing many hats in this video shoveling coal driving trying to explain everything so that's going to be fun no matter which way you look at it so yes on with the show and hope you enjoy but yeah just bear in mind it's going to have a lot of uh, intricacy as well so anyway here we go now this has got to be in my opinion probably one of the most realistic simulations of a steam locomotive in a computer game to date and i know that's a huge call and given that this locomotive was actually released back in 2017 i think it was um, i'm kind of kicking myself that it's taken me this long to actually discover it now if you've been watching the channel you'll know that i've been covering uh train simulator world uh sorry train sim world 2 and a little bit of derail valley lately but this game i'm actually playing today is called train simulator classic so we're going back a few years here but this locomotive is a paid add-on okay and it really has some advanced level scripting and simulation in it so i just want to show a few little details before we get going i'm just going to quickly jam on the brakes and watch as the brake shoes which i've got just showing there watch as they grip the wheels look at that that is pretty much unheard of in a simulation to actually see that amount of detail. You can actually overheat the brakes as well and they spark and everything like that. Okay, so that's just one of the tiny little details I thought I'd start the video off with. Here we are inside the cab and you can see here it's quite busy, but I'll go ahead and try and explain everything shortly and we'll get to drive this thing down the line and see how we go. So we can see here we've got a full head of steam. Our steam uh, relief valves are blowing off there. So we've got a full reserve of steam at the moment. No shortage of steam pressure. So we're pretty much good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and just blow that whistle. And we're based at the Durham station here. And this is a add-on route that I'm driving today as well, a paid map. So I'm driving a paid locomotive on a paid map, okay, in this game. So in Train Sim Classic. So in any case, this video is about this locomotive though, all about the locomotive and just showing off how realistic it is. So some might say too realistic even. Okay, so we've got our regulator here. We've got our steam uh, water gauges, our sight glasses. You can actually adjust these so you can get a better view of the water level. You can see the water level there. It's kind of bobby up and down. You can clear out the gauges and just get a new reading if you need to. Water level extremely important in a steam loco. Make sure you never run out of water. Let's go ahead and look at the guts of this thing. We'll go ahead and open up the firebox. You can see there we've got the, the coals. Now, I'll just give you a quick tip on the coal level. So just count these bolts down here. So you want about one, two, three, and probably the top of the fourth bolt. You don't want the coal to get any lower than that. And you'll see as we drive this thing shortly that you'll start to see more and more bolts get uncovered as the coal level drops. Anyway, I'll explain that as well. 
Uh, we've got this little firing flap here that's meant to improve your airflow when you're not shoveling coal. So you put that up like that and then you kind of close the firebox doors uh, around like that. And that gives you the most optimum fire um, airflow, I guess you could say, okay. Okay, so we've got our brake up here. We'll just go ahead and release that and move that to the left. You've got, our, you've got the brake gauge there. The left hand needle is rising. That's showing the brakes actually releasing. So our brakes will come off shortly. We've got our cylinder drains down on the right hand side there. And okay, so our brakes are pretty much released and we are moving backwards. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and apply the brake again. I just want to show this little uh, knob here before we move off. This wheel which is locked in place so you can unlock it and lock it with that little uh, catch there so basically this is your reverser okay i'm going to assume that you know a little bit about steam locomotives in this video just want to focus on the realism of this particular locomotive so this is your reverser so let's just apply these brakes properly this is annoying now the thing's moving um so i wind this thing all the way to the left and that gives you like low gear or first gear so that's how you start your locomotive okay once you start moving uh, i like to wind it in about two turns and i'll go through that anyway and that's like shifting to high gear kind of thing that is a very important control because if you don't use that control properly you'll run out of steam okay so we've got our cylinder drains or cylinder cocks as they call them open so let's just go ahead and release the brakes and we'll go ahead and get out of this station uh, actually, let's take the throttle off because our brakes are still on. They're just releasing the brakes. The brakes on this locomotive do take a bit of time to release, and you can watch that needle there on the left-hand side. Once it reaches about that position, like so. Okay, brakes are off, so let's go ahead and add some power. So the regulator here is what I'm manipulating, and come on, we're still moving backwards. Let's give it a little bit more power. Not too much power. Don't want to give it full throttle because I'll explain why in just a sec. We can see that we are slowly starting to move forward there and we're going to be chuff chuffing away very shortly. Now see that big cloud of steam I've got in front of the locomotive? That's because the cylinder cocks or the drains as they call them are open, drawing out any excess moisture. That needs to happen a few turns of the wheels and then we'll close them up. Okay, you can see the water level is quite high so you don't want to apply too much throttle here. I must emphasize this. Do not open the throttle all the way like I just quickly did there. The regulator, you want to go very easy on the regulator, so that red lever there in front of us. The danger if you apply too much throttle with this regulator right now, and if you open it all the way, it will actually get locked in position. You won't be able to move it around anymore because the locomotive will prime. And that means that water from the boiler, because it's the water level so high, it'll actually get sucked into the cylinders. And that's not a good day, actually. So when that happens, if you really do it really badly and you prime the locomotive really bad, you'll find that your brakes here will actually start to apply. And at that point, you might as well restart the scenario because, yeah, I haven't managed to recover from that situation yet. So really good tip there is just go easy on the throttle when you're moving off if you've got a full water level which is pretty much what we've got now when you start the locomotive in a new scenario you will most likely always have a full water level we'll just go ahead and close up the cylinder cocks or the the drains and you can see there that cloud of smokes disappeared that cloud of steam so we should be picking up more speed now because more pressure in the cylinders need to open those cylinder cocks when we start just to get rid of any excess moisture all right so i've just wound in the valve gear about two turns as you saw there so as i've seen before i want to start off with this thing fully wound out to the left and then as you speed up i go in two turns that gives me around 67 ish percent on the reverser value and then as we increase speed a bit more what i like to do is i wind it in another one and a half so i just go we're already two turns in one and a half okay so we're three and a half turns in clockwise now from fully open okay so fully screwed out to the left to start and then once you start speeding up three and a half turns in and that gives you around 20 odd percent reverser value you can screw it in a little bit more but just be wary you'll get to the middle point and then you'll go into reverse gear if you're not careful okay so about four turns from fully open uh four turns clockwise will get you to the middle gear 
So you can see they've got a huge head of steam still. Our water level should start coming down so we can start to open the throttle shortly. Just move the brake into the running position there and we'll use a little bit less steam. Just watch that needle, make sure the needle doesn't start to drop because we are moving it towards the apply position, the brake lever there. But moving the brake lever into the running position, you kind of use less steam, okay? Because it uses steam pressure to keep the brakes released, okay? So, yeah. Sorry for you guys who are watching who may not know much about steam locomotives. This video is more for advanced users trying to run this locomotive. So, what I'm showing there is just the, uh, the steam, I'm sorry, the chimney smoke. And you do want that to be a nice light grey colour as well to show that you're running efficiently. Okay, so the water level's coming down now. Okay, so we want it in between about a third and two thirds, okay, when we run this locomotive. You want it around that range. You don't want it too high because you could prime and obviously you don't want it too low because you could run out of water and then the scenario will end and your locomotive will explode. You don't want that. Okay, just quickly I want to show this real quick. This is a device called a lubricator and it's on by default, which is that position there. You can swing that lever left to right to turn it on or off. Keep it on, you don't want it off like that. So make sure that lever is in the on position. So what this does is it sends little droplets of oil through those little sight glasses there. Quite cute actually, as the drops of oil go through there. And it lubricates the axles on the locomotive and all the all the moving parts get lubricated so we don't uh, grind to a halt. And having enough trouble keeping this thing moving. Well, I know some of you were, uh, and I definitely was when I first got it. But once you master this locomotive, you'll find it very rewarding. So we've got a set of points coming up. We're going to do a little turnout onto the... Uh, onto a different line there. So I don't want to, I don't want to open the throttle too much here. Our water levels come down, so we can actually open the throttle now. So when the water is around that level, we can actually open the throttle fully if you want to. Now, how to add water. So obviously you do need to add water. You've got the exhaust and the live valves right there. Exhaust here. Okay, so you can, uh, you can that's your exhaust injector, it uses exhaust steam. And this is your live injector, it uses live steam. The live steam injector will take a dent out of your boiler pressure okay so you will lose steam pressure if you use the live injector the thing with the live injector is it will pump water faster however in most cases and just checking my speed there on the on-screen display just real quick and because it's 20 miles an hour speed limit through here don't want to go too fast and once we get through this set of points here we'll just uh, wait for the rest of the carriages we've got a few carriages on the back today, not too many. But yes, once we clear these points, we'll go ahead and just open up this throttle a little bit more. And just look at our steam pressure is wonderfully at the limit still. So we're in no danger of running out of steam right now. That little red line, it's about 175 PSI on the boiler. That is the limit. You don't want to get down to about 100 or 120. If you run out of steam and you end up down to about 100 or 120, you'll find the brakes will start to come on, those needles will start dropping, and then you'll, you'll be having a bad day, basically. So keep an eye out on your boiler pressure as you're driving. If your boiler pressure is coming down, it's most likely because of this wheel, the reverser, is set incorrectly, or you've got too much throttle on. So this regulator is on open too much. So... Just checking the water level there. We'll come down to about halfway now actually. So soon we'll have to start injecting some water. Let's go ahead and light this match. Listen. There we go. I don't know if you heard that little strike there. But we just lit that match. And we can light up the, uh, the locomotive interior here. We can actually move this little lamp around. So we can move it from the right hand side. Uh, come on. To the left hand side. Just like that. This is more useful for nighttime operations, obviously, but the other thing with these sight glasses here, you can move them around, I think as I did show earlier. Got a nice straight section of track ahead of us here, so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and check on our fire and just see how we're going. Now, you see, when you've got the throttle open, you've got a lot of draft going through the firebox. It's actually quite difficult to see the level of coal in there. Very, very realistic indeed. Okay, let's just bring up the on-screen HUD here. And we can see our fire mass is about 392 pounds there. Just cheating and looking at the on-screen. 
the optimal fire mass is 450 pounds, okay, according to the manual. So I don't like to cheat. I like to look at the firebox and try and work it out according to those stay bolts and just how many bolts are showing rather than looking at those on-screen cheat displays. So I try, I, like, I try and keep those head-up displays off for the most part and just try and drive this thing by visuals and feel alone. Okay, so just going to get off the throttle here a little bit and just listen to that wonderful sound scheme. You can hear these things rattling around and the sound actually changes once you get off the throttle. You'll hear a different sound as the valve gear clanks around. It's a good idea to actually open your blower just slightly which basically introduces an artificial draft through the firebox when you're not accelerating. When you're on the gas and accelerating you can turn off that blower but when you're at a station or when you're at a standstill, if you're off the throttle, if you're going through a tunnel, just turn off that blower a little bit. Now the other thing down here is you've got a damper setting. So I'm just going to show that. So this is the rear damper lever, okay? This makes the most difference to your steam generation as compared to the front damper. So if you find that you're kind of running low on steam or you've got too much steam, you can manipulate that damper lever as well. So right now I've got a huge reserve of steam pressure still. So I've just gone ahead and closed down that damper lever, uh, that lever by pushing it towards the floor. Okay, fully up on that damper lever is fully open. Most oxygen through the fire. Okay. Okay, let's just take five for a second here. What I've done is I've just frozen the video because I'm, I'm just running behind. I can't talk as fast as I'm doing stuff. So basically what I'm about to show you now is I've just gone ahead and opened up that regulator, that big red lever there. And I'm just going to show you how it's not going to make much of a difference to the acceleration of the locomotive. And I'll go through why that is and how we can basically accelerate the locomotive when we need to, when we're rolling down the line, okay? Because uh, there's a lot of factors. Like for example, you could be coming up to a hill or you could have a long train behind you and then you know, you've been going downhill for a lot of the track and then you come to a part of the route where you start to climb up the hill and then you're like, oh no, I've got no power. I've opened this regulator, this big yellow, I'm sorry, this big red throttle lever or accelerator lever and nothing's happening to the locomotive. It's not accelerating. What is going on? And the answer actually lies in that reverser wheel that I showed it in the video there. So basically if it's just like if you're driving a car and you're in fifth or sixth gear and you're doing say 50 kilometers an hour, which is not fast and then you put your foot down and you're still stuck in fifth or sixth the car's not going to respond okay in most cases so you need to basically gear down the locomotive okay and that's what i'm going to do now once i unfreeze the video using that reverser wheel we'll do that unlock of the latch and we'll wind that thing anti-clockwise and we'll put the oomph back in the locomotive let's go ahead sorry and uh, unfreeze the video and you'll see me do that now Okay, so you can see I've opened the regulator, not much is happening. Let's just go ahead and unwind, so unclasp the latch, and we'll just unscrew this anti-clockwise just a little bit, not too much. You don't want to wind it back into first gear as it were, because that's like, you know, jamming your car into first gear when you're still going down the road quite fast, so you don't want to do that. You just want to unwind it slowly, uh, or slightly, sorry, about half a turn or so, or quarter of a turn at a time. And you'll notice here, if I just shut up for a second, see that or hear that, the, the tempo of the locomotive is increasing, okay? So we're actually accelerating the train now. We are, uh, yeah, and you can hear it now. Yeah, we're really, yeah, so we're really gaining speed now. So you kind of have to be careful. There's a lot of potential energy uh, harnessed in this boiler. You just got to know how to use it, okay? All right, so our water level's coming down. We don't want it to be less than about one third ish there. So what we'll do is we'll start to pump some water in soon. We are making a slight dent in our boiler pressure, but we've got heaps of boiler pressure. But what we'll do, whoops, we don't want to use the handbrake. That is the handbrake and that's the water scoop wheel there. Don't want to really play with these wheels here. Don't need them. What I want to show is right near them is these water valves. Oops, sorry, I should really go to the other side and show this just open that little black valve down there by turning it clockwise and then just open the exhaust steam injector on the right hand side there that red lever okay that one there and have a listen and you can hear the water flowing you can see we haven't touched the live side and we should see some water being injected into the boiler shortly 
and we'll see those type glasses reflect the increased level on the boiler shortly as well. Because I'm using the exhaust side, that right hand steam valve, the injector rate is not going to be very fast, but at least we're not going to be using up much steam either in order to inject that water in. Okay, so I'm hoping that this is making sense right now. I do apologize if I've gone a little bit fast. I'm hoping that you do have some semblance of knowledge of how locomotives work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jam on the brakes here. And I love the sound. You probably didn't get to hear this, but if I go faster and do this, uh, I love those brakes squeaking as well. But you'll be able to hear when you go faster and jam on the brakes, you can hear those cast iron brake shoes just like grinding against the wheels. It's a wonderful sound. All right. so. I've just stopped the locomotive because I just want to take a bit of a break here. We're on the main line, I know, but there's no traffic today, so yay. All right, so we just tried injecting a bit of water, but we haven't made much of a difference in the boiler, okay? So you might be like having a bit of a panic attack now, going, oh my God, I've just been pumping water. Nothing's happening. What's going on? We've got a huge head of steam still. So this is where you can use the live injector, okay? So on the other side, which I'm now on the other side, so I've got to hop back to the left-hand side. So just bear with me a second. Just seem to be on the wrong side, whichever way I am. Um, so you see this water valve here, open this here. You hear that? And look outside, you'll see water flowing, okay? So water is being wasted right now. What we're gonna do is now do the second part to inject the water and that is open the steam valve, okay? That is the live steam valve because it's on the left hand side. That is going to inject water way faster than the right hand lever that we just used before. The disadvantage here is you'll notice that the steam pressure will get eaten into quite a bit faster than using the exhaust side there on the right hand side. Okay, so we're using. If you want water fast and you're quite low on water and you've got heaps of steam or boiler pressure, just use this lever on the left hand side. You'll notice uh, the steam pressure coming down already, actually. So it's very dangerous to use this uh, left-hand lever like we are now whilst you're underway, because you'll find that it uses way more steam pressure than the right-hand lever. But it does inject water more effectively. So just using the left-hand lever here. And so what we'll do is we'll close it up now. And then we'll close the tender valve last, okay? So tender valve open, steam valve open, then steam valve closed, tender valve closed, okay? So that's how you basically inject water. Hopefully that's clear as mud. So just do that again. Open the tender valve, okay? That's part one. And then open the steam valve, okay? You got left and right valves. So if you open the tender valve on the right side, then open the steam valve on the right side as well, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. You do have this little rod here and the corresponding rod on the other side there. I'm just showing. Hopefully you can see this. This is a trimmer, okay? So there's a bit of a black art to managing the steam injection, like the water injection, sorry. If it's making a sound just like this, hear that? That sound there means that you're not actually injecting any water. So you've got to find the sweet spot by moving this trimmer lever here until you hear that nice sound. Yep, that's the sound that you're looking for, okay? And I know it can be quite difficult to hear that over the din of the locomotive when you're barreling down the rails there, but just try and listen out for it. And hopefully you shouldn't have to play with that, that trimmer valve too much, that rod. But you can see here our water level is really being uh, pumped up now. So we're getting up to about two thirds there. So um, yeah, you can see there that we're making quite a difference to the water level and we are making a bit of a dent in our boiler pressure too. So let's go ahead and just open the blower because we are at a standstill. And you'll notice that the smoke from the chimney is being blown upwards quite a bit faster. So we're actually burning a more efficient fire now. And that means that our steam generation will be improved as well. So let's go ahead and just check on our coal level. And because we've got the blower on, everything is kind of drafty, can't see much. Just turn the blower off and watch. See as the fire kind of settles down and we can see more clearly. Now have a look there. You can see the fire grates at the bottom of the firebox there. See that? Hopefully you can see that. Um, that's something that you do not want to see, okay? I'm just going to highlight it here. Hopefully you can see those little bars there in amongst all the uh, coals. 
you don't want to see those bars because that means in reality you'll be doing a whole bunch of hot spotting and cold spotting and melting and not not really good stuff okay so we're just pressing the R key now every time you press R he adds about 10 pounds of coal into the firebox and the coals will start to like you can see there that there's one two three four bolts easily showing there so we are we have left this a little bit too long and we should have been shoveling more coal but anyway let's go ahead and just shovel a few more pounds of coal so press the R key and you get 10 pounds of coal shoveled in each time so I've pressed the R key about four or five times now we're back up into the 400s I think there from what it looks like uh, 400 ish pounds of fire mass which is where we want to be at the minimum like I said around 450 is the ideal fire mass for this locomotive so probably a little bit higher than this around the three bolt mark if I'm being honest I guess but no higher than that okay so we're looking good there we can't see the fire grates anymore at least at the bottom of the firebox just go ahead and close up the oh okay <laughs> see how easy it is to um, kind of tune out that that water sound and almost over overfill your boiler so if we were too full and we go ahead and try and start this locomotive now we're going to prime it and we'll get water in the cylinders and we don't want that so good thing i turned off the water just now and we're not injecting anymore so just being very careful now see because we were using the exhaust valve there to pump water exhaust injector that our steam pressure is looking pretty good and interesting too we had the blower off this whole time because we we're looking at the firebox if we had the blower on we would have generated even more steam pressure just going to go ahead and open up the damper a little bit here just to kind of recover our pressure a bit more okay all right so just going to show down here as well you do have the cylinder cock lever i just use the c key to be honest because i don't like coming over here and, and trying to open it and close it um, the c key does that and you've also got the front damper lever down there as well push that in all the way to open it and pull it out to close it the front damper to be honest i leave that about halfway and i don't really touch it the rear damper which is the one on the floor there which i showed earlier is the one that makes the biggest difference or influence this one here this rear damper that's the biggest influencer of your steam generation okay so all the way on the floor if you want less steam all the way up if you want more steam got our firebox looking nice there our firebox doors got a good head of steam on the gauge there on the boiler pressure gauge so I think we are ready to release the brakes and I'll just run through how we get this thing moving again just in case you missed it the first time and just for the uh, sake of, of going through it and reinforcing so wind this all the way to the left so think of a screw you're unscrewing something and basically apply some throttle got the cylinder cocks open so that we're draining any moisture out We'll leave these cylinder drains or cylinder cocks open for about four revolutions of the wheels or thereabouts. A few pumps of the pistons and then we'll go ahead and hit the C key or push that lever on the right hand side either way. And then we're not going <laughs> to... Interesting, when you accelerate, when you add the regulator, it actually artificially raises the level of the boiler as well because the steam's rushing into the pistons your water levels kind of jumping up as well the water wants to go in there too um, but yeah you got to be careful not to open the throttle too far because we've kind of found ourselves with too much water again in the boiler because we've been pumping injecting too long anyway so once we get some speed I wind it in two turns like I said before so we're effectively changing gears now. We're not in first gear anymore. So two turns clockwise and wait for the engine to catch up a little bit. And she's accelerating nicely. We've got about four carriages, I think, there on the back. But even with a longer train, these principles still apply. You probably just use a bit more throttle or regulator and probably wait a little bit longer before you screw in the reverser so now we're changing gear again another one and a half turn like i said before and we're about 26 ish percent on the valve gear okay so three and a half turns clockwise from fully unscrewed and then away you go so if you've got a longer train just sort of delay how soon you screw in the reverser and probably open the regulator a little bit more but just be mindful of your water level okay do not open the regulator too far 
if your water sight glass is showing that your water levels are quite high, okay? Please just keep that in mind. Do not open the throttle too far or the regulator too far if your water level is too high. Wait for the water level to come down if you have to. And with the water level as it is now, I think we're, we're pretty good to open the regulator if we need to. And we're accelerating nicely. As I said, we've got four cars on the back now, four carriages. If we had a longer train, obviously you might want to unscrew or go back to a lower gear slightly just to get a bit more uh, torque through the wheels. Maybe open the blower very slightly, maybe. Uh, yeah, so anti-clockwise you get more torque if you've got a longer train. Just keep an eye on your boiler pressure. You do not want that to drop. So if you notice your boiler pressure dropping, then your valve gear and this regulator are the biggest causes of your boiler pressure dropping, okay? So boiler pressure dropping, wind in the reg uh, uh, sorry the reverser a little bit clockwise, maybe reduce the regulator a little bit. So it really is a bit of a dark art driving these steam engines, especially when they're so realistically modeled like this one. And also not just driving it, but also knowing the routes, knowing where the hills are, knowing where the stations are, knowing when to shovel coal, knowing when to back off the damper so that you don't end up with too much steam, knowing when there's a hill coming up so that you can get the coal in the firebox beforehand. It really is a bit of an art. So I'm just gonna stop this thing a little bit. Actually, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna accelerate. I just wanna show you a few failure modes, like the sparks coming out of the chimney. So let's go ahead and do that. So just going back to first gear basically here, we've got a nice buffer of water and we've got a full head of steam. So let's just go full throttle. Oh, here she goes. All right, so we just floored it in first gear basically and look at the, oh, just to let everyone know that we're about to come blasting through the station. Look at the, uh, look at the sparks coming from the chimney this is how not to drive your steam locomotive okay if you've got sparks coming out of the chimney like this it's a bad idea you can see the locomotive kind of shaking as well she's not happy right now okay basically this is not a, and look at the steam gauge it's coming down pretty fast actually okay so you don't want to run like this for too long this is like you've got it floored in first gear okay so let's just back off the throttle and treat her nicely because yeah, you can't, this is not sustainable driving like this. Wind it in about two turns clockwise. Actually, let's just go another one and a half. So like I said, three and a half turns. And now if we open the throttle once again, the regulator, she's going to be much more happier. There'll be no sparks coming out of the chimney. And she'll be a happy camper. Look at that. No sparks anymore. Now because we just sort of abused it a little bit, let's go ahead and check on the fire. Um, so we'll just go down and check on the firebox and see what it's like. See what the coals are like. Ooh, okay, I can see the fire grates again. So we want to fix that by just hitting the R key a few times. Just to bring that level of coal up. We should be shoveling quite a bit more coal actually because the the coal level you can see that there's more than four bolts actually so yeah not good not good always keep an eye out on your fire and you can see now because we're accelerating we got a bit of draft coming through it's harder to see the fire as well so yeah make sure that you keep the keep the coal in the firebox the other thing to note as well I should mention is that there is a scripted fireman. Do not use the automatic fireman in the game, in the simulator, in the settings. Use the scripted fireman that comes with this locomotive, okay? And how do you do that? Well, basically, you just press the Control R key, okay? And just having a look at our water now, it's come down to about halfway. Just clear out the, the gauge and make sure we've got a correct reading here. So with these side glasses, you've got these bottom levers here which you can flush the reading out, you can adjust the glasses as I've shown that already, so let's just check that out. 
these top levers here they just freeze the reading as far as I know if you want to look at what it is at a point in time I'm pretty sure that's how that works okay so boiler pressure good I just want to talk about the braking now so when I break I try and keep it no more than about 10 inches on the vacuum gauge when I apply the brakes if you do need harder braking you can break all the way down to zero inches if you want that's full application of the brakes more or less and we can see that we are chugging along quite nicely here and boiler pressure is looking just fine as well so what I might do is just having a look at the water levels here we might need to start injecting a little bit of water into the boiler now so we'll go ahead and just use the live valve so tend the valve first and then the steam injector second and listen for that sound that's the perfect sound that we want our steam pressure is coming down a little bit because we're using the live one we're not using the exhaust we can use both but I wouldn't recommend it you really put a huge demand on your on your boiler pressure when you use both injectors at once okay so I try not to use both just use one or the other basically and you'll see that the pressure will come down so I've just gotten off the throttle here because we can afford to kind of coast as well and we just want to keep an eye on our sight glasses there as well all right so we are chugging along nicely there you can see here that there's a lot that goes into running this locomotive okay and before I was stopped and we were pumping water and just imagine trying to do that while you're moving and if you have ill-timed it and you're trying to go up a hill and you're trying to pump water in and then your boiler pressure is going down and then your fire is going down and you need to add more coal and then you're like oh no what's going on everything's going wrong so there's a lot that goes into running these locomotives for sure especially this kind of steam locomotive like I said before especially where it's quite realistically modeled there's a lot going on and like I said at the start of the video well, you are doing the work of at least two people here you're driving and you're trying to manage the fire you're trying to inject the water as well you're looking out for the route and all that kind of thing um, yeah so there's a lot going on that's for sure okay one last thing I want to show is I've just picked up a little bit of speed here and what I'm going to do in just a second is I'm going to jam on the brakes and apply full braking force we've got a, a huge head of steam so lots of uh, opportunity to apply full braking force here and you'll be able to see just how effective or ineffective the brakes are at this higher speed and you'll if we're lucky we'll see some sparks and fireworks from the brakes as well okay so here we go let's take off the throttle completely and apply the brakes so here we go full application of brakes there goes the vacuum gauge and listen to that howling sound that's the brake pads now fully applied against the wheels okay now I just want to show what's going on here we're actually going quite fast doing about 30 miles an hour almost okay so about 26 miles an hour we started braking and there it is you can see the brakes sparking away there see those sparks flying from the brake blocks that's the characteristic of these cast iron brake shoes as well the faster you go the less effective they actually get so if you're pulling a train doing 30, 40 miles an hour, or God forbid, even faster, uh, if you start to brake, make sure you're braking early, because if you brake as hard as you can, which I just did then, you'll see there that the brakes are just not up to task, okay? And especially if you're pulling a goods train, and a train that doesn't have uh, any, like an unfitted train, and you're just relying on your own locomotive brakes, good luck to you. <laughs> so yeah, that's just something to keep in mind there. Anyway, I think we'll wrap up here. I've just got one more quick tip to show you just with regards to water injection. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start injecting water using the live steam injector. Just turn on the tender water valve there and the live steam injector. Now, even though it sounds like the water is nicely trimmed, well, I've just untrimmed it now. So let's just go ahead and trim it. And you can hear that sound and you might think everything's nice and good, but actually, it may not be even though we are actually pumping water into the boiler if we go ahead and just hop outside you'll see here that we are actually still losing a bit of water underneath the tender so you can actually fine-tune that trimmer valve there very very slightly 
the sound doesn't really change but you can actually eliminate that leak as well as I've just done there so you can do that for the um, other side as well but yeah I've just done this on the live injector side at the moment so if we go ahead and you can actually use both injectors at the same time but that really does put a huge kind of demand on your boiler pressure so if we go ahead and untrim the live side you'll see that even though it's pumping water we can hear the sound is all good you'll see outside there that it was leaking go ahead and just adjust it a bit more and you'll see that the leak stopped so yeah just thought I'd quickly show that as well for what it's worth okay and that's it thanks so much for watching if you've made it this far I really appreciate your viewership and I hope you enjoyed this video no matter if you're looking to drive this locomotive in the simulator or if you're just a casual sort of viewer really uh, hope you enjoyed today's video so please like uh, comment subscribe if you haven't already please feel free to share the video too amongst your friends if you really did enjoy it as well really appreciate as I said your viewership and your your patience and your and your attention so yes look forward to making more videos on this locomotive feel free to leave a comment below on this video if you've got any feedback as well and I do have a scenario which I've built for this locomotive on this very train route as well so keep an eye out for that I'll probably make a video on that scenario soon as well just putting the finishing touches to it but yes until then I'll see you in the next video.